evening and thank you to all of you for joining us for our back to school presentation on helping kids maintain back health when returning to school. I still can't believe it's already back to school time. Wow, did the summer fly by. Tonight we're joined by Casey Jo Hill, one of our physical therapists from our outpatient rehab location at the health center at Palmer Township. Casey has been with LVHN for four and a half years and is highly experienced in treating orthopedic and musculoskeletal conditions in adults and pediatrics, as well as neurological and vestibular disorders. We will have some time for questions and answers at the end of the presentation, so we invite you to submit your questions in the chat box. Again, we thank you for joining us, and without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Casey. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Back to School Maintaining Back Health When Returning to School presentation. Um, as Lisa said, I'm Casey. I work for the network. Um, before we get started, I just want to thank Lehigh Valley Health Network, um, Riley's Children's Hospital, and LVHN overall for allowing me to do this presentation for you guys. Um, and special shout out to my um, to my direct colleague, Christopher Rodolico, who also helped put this presentation together for everybody. So. Um, as we get going, there's four main back to school topics that I want to cover, including activity guidelines, your overall posture, um, your workspace setup, and backpacks. So about me, um, I'm a Bethlehem native. I graduated from Youngstown State University in 2016 with my doctorate in physical therapy. Um, and just as a background, um, a fun thing about me, I actually compete in powerlifting and I'm currently training for my first international competition in October, so that should be fun. Um, so if you have any questions generally about um, resistance training, overall health, physical therapy, I'm here. All right, so first thing we want to talk about is setting kids up for success before they go back to school. And one of the biggest rules with that is keeping them active. So um, the US Department of Health and Human Services, uh, they have specific guidelines for um, children of all ages. From preschool age children, uh, preschool age children ages three to five should be physically active throughout the day to enhance their growth and development, which typically around these ages, they're pretty active anyway. Um, so it's mainly just facilitating and encouraging that, that fun activity. Um, children and adolescents ages six through 17 should also do about 60 minutes to an hour or more of moderate to vigorous act, uh, physical activity a day. Um, and with that, the, um, I believe further guidelines include um, that the uh, activity should incorporate vigorous activity at least three days a week. So keep them active and encourage things that are fun, that they enjoy doing, um, and that are appropriate for their age. So there's nothing more fun than sticking with something that you that you actually, um, well, compliance is, um, is important for things that you enjoy doing, because how often do we get involved in stuff that we don't like? We don't really stick with it. So find something that you can encourage and, um, and facilitate, you know, having fun experiences and overall, um, you know, activities. So, all right. Um, so as we talked about, we want to do about 60 minutes or more per day of either moderate or vigor vigorous intensity aerobic physical activity um, and should include vigorous intensity at least three days a week. Um, that should also include muscle and bone strengthening. So as a part of their 60 minutes or more of daily physical activity, children and adolescents should include muscle strengthening and bone strengthening um, at least three days a week. And this can include body weight and resistance training under supervision and proper training and education. Um, just to dispel some of the um, some you know some rumors that are out there, lifting actually does not stunt growth and is shown to improve neurological pathways um, to the muscles. So it can also help reduce pain overall. Um, so lifting um, is actually super important for maintaining your overall health, not just the aerobic activity. I may be a little bit biased in that in that aspect. All right, so um, going back to the main reasons that we're here, posture. Um, just a heads up, posture is a range of movements. So it's not just standing upright, you know, military posture all the time. Our bodies are meant to move. Um, so it's more than just how you statically sit or stand. 
Um, we generally assess, um, if you look at the photo on the presentation, um, your alignment of your head, your shoulders, your back, your knees, your ankles, um, all of those give us an indication of um, how your muscles are holding your body in line. So um, posture is something to take note of, but it's not everything when it comes to um, when it comes to overall health and utilizing a backpack. All right. So um, this past year with the pandemic moving on, you know, everybody, a lot of homeschool happened. Um, and so we've had to quickly set up, you know, children's workspaces or even our own workspaces over time. So um, these are just some general tips to help you um, to help, you know, maintain your overall back health. So encourage the natural S curve, S curve of your spine. So naturally we have a curve in our neck, in our, um, you know, by our shoulders, in our low back. So facilitate that natural curvature. As you can see, I have it marked with a star here, um, what you should generally look like. So think 90 degree angles. Um, too often I've seen this last one where everyone's just like, oh, I'm done. Um, obviously try not to stay in that position so long. Um, that can you know, lead to some muscular imbalances and things like that. But overall, try to keep yourself at the, um, you know, think of the 90 degree angles. So position your materials at eye level at approximately an arm's length away. Do not lean to one side. So avoid this, you know, this slouch posture over here again for a prolonged period of time. Avoid overcorrecting. So those that are with me, we're gonna go through one quick drill. So I'm gonna have you slouch. And then you're gonna sit up upright as tall as you possibly can. And then relax about 10%. So that's about where you kind of should be. Um, if, you know, if you're questioning whether or not you're, you know, you're slouching too much or you're, um, or you're extending too much, do that drill and that can help you find maybe a more natural position for you. Um, and the biggest thing is encourage frequent, frequent rest breaks. Um, change positions when you're able. Um, sometimes staying rigid in that one position is a little too much on the bones and joints, um, really for everybody. So encourage that movement um, and say it goes back to that physical activity. You know, you want to be moving. Um, you want to. You don't want to stay static the entire time. So it's okay to take rest breaks. All right. So here's the meat of the presentations. These are how backpacks should fit. Um, the top of the bag should be positioned just below the shoulders, while the bottom um, remains above the waist when adjusted. So this should be maintained when the backpack is fully loaded, um, and a reinforced backpack will help maintain the shape of the bag. Um, with that, it's important to note that, um, that when you're carrying heavy books and things like that, which I'll get into this a little bit later, um, there is a certain percentage of your body weight that um, that we want to try to adhere to, um, and that can affect the overall position of the bag. So if you look at the photos, you know the one strap can lead to imbalances that way, and that that excessive curvature to the one side. Um, so you want to make sure that you're using both straps, um, have the belt around the waist, and if there's one at the chest, that's great. Um, and there is a there is a wrong way to wear the backpacks if it's too heavy. Um, so I do have a couple backpack examples that I want to show you. So the first one is a little bit too small. So I'm going to throw this on. All right, and here you can see um, it's around the shoulders, all right, but it doesn't quite hit the waist underneath. Um, when this oftentimes probably can't hold the amount of um, the amount of weight or books that you know that that. Um, or a, a heavy amount of books, which you don't want to be carrying anyway. Um, but this one, for example, is too small. And then we have one that is entirely too big. And this can affect the overall mechanics too. And this backpack, you can tell it's even too big because it doesn't even fit on the screen. All right. So um, one that's too big, it'll come up sometimes by your head or drop below their pants. Um, so you don't, you want to avoid one like that, and then, of course, the Goldilocks of it all is one that it fits right between my shoulder blades, and if you can see, it's right around my hips. 
Now this kind of poses a challenge for kids that are growing because as we know, little ones especially, you know, will grow over time, but try to find one that um, is ideal for their size. Um, style and function, we'll get into that a little bit later. All right, so um, when it comes to the backpacks, look at the pockets, look for multiple storage areas. Um, so that, that first one that I showed you only has one pocket. It's hard to distribute the weight, so a lot of times it's centered, um, you know, right at the, like, about the mid-back, and it's going to cause people to arch a little bit. Um, and over time, that can, again, to, it can cause people to develop some pain. Um, so look for multiple pockets in storage areas. Backpacks should weigh no more than about 10 to 15 percent of your child's body weight. So if your child weighs 100, you know, 100 pounds, it shouldn't be more than 10 to 15 pounds. Um, it's easy to maintain for those that you that for those that use iPads or tablets, but it can certainly pose a problem for schools that require the heavy textbooks. So make sure um, they're using a locker or only utilizing you know the books they need for that day as their classes change. All right, so the straps, we briefly cover this, use them all. Um, one strap may feel or look cool, um, but use both, using both will help maintain the even weight distribution when tightened. And finding backpacks with the chest and the hip straps can also help redistribute the weight, um, not just at the shoulders or at the neck or at the low back because it's so heavy that they have to arch, but it can help even you out from top to bottom. All right, so I taught, I, um, I said we were gonna go back to style and function. So, so many kids, especially, they wanna pick out the cool character, they wanna pick out their, um, you know, the, their favorite color, something along those lines. But oftentimes, those may not be the most ideal backpacks, but just remember, um, bags can be easily customizable. So, even if you, if you find a good backpack that has the padding, that has the, you know, multiple po pockets and things like that, um, it may not be the color that they want, but it can be easily customizable with keychains, patches, zipper pulls, anything you can really think of. You can always customize. Um, and don't forget a backpack is an investment in a child's health. So, um, you know, think about the future and setting them up for success. Going back to my first slide, um, you, you want to set them up for um, you know, for a pain-free and easy transition into school, something that they can move and be active with. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're looking at the backpacks. Um, final tips. So this is a big one. Be an example for your child. Establish and model good habits, um, especially, you know, as they're younger. A lot of times they'll, they'll look to you um, because you are their role model. So, you know, Stay active yourself. Find family activities that you all can enjoy and um, reiterate some of those workspace tips if you decide, you know, to, to keep your child at home or even at school um, for their learning experience. Whatever you decide, make sure you're modeling those good habits um, with, the, like I said, workplace setup, posture, and overall activity. All right, so that brings us to the question portion. So if you have any questions, let me know. Okay, we're going to open it up for questions. Um, if you have any, please feel free to put them in the chat box so that we can have Casey answer them for you. Um, after buying a new backpack, should it be fitted on your child with school supplies in it or empty? Um, so definitely fit it with the school supplies in so you can see what it looks like on them. This is a mistake that's made all too often where um, parents will put the backpack on um, at the store, it looks great, and then start loading and you start seeing, and you start seeing, you know, this type of posture where they're compensating or leaning back. So um, always try with, um, with, the, with the supplies in it so you can really see what it looks like on a regular day of school. Great. Um... Let's see here. We've got one more question. Any recommendations for activities for kids for strength training, especially young kids? Um, so it definitely depends on what your goals are um, without having, you know, evaluated 
you or the child. Um, it's you know it's hard to it's hard to say right now, but general recommendations um, for strength training overall. Um, so I actually I have a fantastic well not that um, you know not that you guys want to hear about research all the time, but the um, American Academy of Pediatrics recommended that um, strength training has actually changed their um, their recommendations on strength training that it is safe as long as you have proper supervision. So um, it goes back to what I said earlier about finding something that's fun and is applicable to whatever their goals are, because there's a lot of different strength programs out there um, that can help build muscle, um, that can help, um, you know, build their overall like aerobic capacity, um, you know, get stronger in their sports or just generally get started in fitness if your child isn't involved. So. Um, Again, physical therapy is a great place to, to start where we can help you build some of those foundations for resistance training. Um, but overall, I would say, again, find and facilitate whatever you feel like or whatever the child feels that um, they want to pursue. And, you know, we can always go from there. So, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of hard without, you know, evaluating them in front of me. But again, find something that's fun and somebody with proper supervision and training in helping them reach their goals. That's great. And I think it's also important to um, mention that strength training doesn't always necessarily mean weightlifting. Like there's a lot of body weight strength training. So I think that's something that we don't always think about when we talk about strength training, but I know from personal experience, it's helped my kiddo a lot. Mm -hmm. um, all right, we've got another question. Uh, can back pain from a backpack cause serious injury to children? Um, so it it can certainly lay the foundation for um, for problems later on. So um, what I've been researching a little bit and what I've seen, if if you're referring to something like scoliosis, it can't cause it can't cause scoliosis. Um, that's more of a like growth and developmental thing. So um, that's been extensively studied through the uh, through CHOP, um, Children's Hospital of, Phys of Philadelphia. So it can't cause something along the lines of um, of like scoliosis. But um, if the symptoms are not addressed right away, as far as um, it, once they start complaining, if it's not addressed right away, um, or you know. All, do we alter the way that they move or um, we alter their their backpack you know use overall um, then you know it can spiral into certain things but the important thing is pain isn't also you know just musculoskeletal we have to look at the person as a whole um, and that's you know that that I think is where um, you know we can't just take pain at the surface we need to look at you know what they experience as a human um, and alter their environment around them, not just the backpack. But again, that little thing sometimes can spiral. So it's um, if not addressed early, it certainly can, um, you know, lead to pain in other areas because we can start compensating. But um, if addressed early, usually not. All right, I think that's all the questions we have for now. Um, so thank you, Casey, and thank you everyone who joined us this evening. Um, we know that you all have very busy schedules and we appreciate you taking the time. Um, if you would like to schedule an appointment with rehab services, uh, we have the contact information up here on the screen. You can, um, visit LVHN.org or give us a call at 888-402-LVHN. Uh, next month, we will have a virtual event on concussion and fall sports. So if you'd like more information, please check us out, check it out on lvhn.org slash parent sessions. Thanks and have a good night.